so much. Thank you very 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 much. Can you just begin to think about what God's done for you in the last 72 hours? Can, can, can close your eyes. I don't want to see your eyes. Close your eyes. Can you just think what he did for you in the last 72 hours? Can you just think from the place where he shifted you from and to the place that he shifted you into? Can you just imagine how many answers he's given you in the last 72 hours? And, and then matter of fact, can you, can you just think about the fact that, lift your hands right now, lift your hands. Can, can, can you think about the fact that somebody's in the hospital wishing that they could do what you're doing right now? But, 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 but their hands can't even lift off the hospital bed. Can, can, can you just imagine that somebody's in the hospital that can't move their feet, that can't move their mouth, that, that are blind and cannot even see? But yet God has given you the ability. What does it mean? It means that you are operating as a miracle walking around. So every day that you get up and you can just lift your hands. And you get up and you can just move your legs. That's the outfit I'm coming in. Keep your elbows sitting in the old child. The whole world is coming in here, y'all. Can you just imagine that every day you can get up and do that? That is the indication that God is ready to work another miracle. Miracles and somebody coming writing you a check and somebody coming telling you you did wonderful, but no, the miracle is simply when I'm able to wake up and lift my hands. When I'm able to get up and lift my legs and say, God, I can roll out of bed. God, it may be a pain in my bed, but God, somebody got pain in pain in God, just go work it on me. So right now, for about the next 30 seconds, can you close your eyes? Can you not worry about your neighbor? Can you not worry about me and you and pray about the rest of But for the next 30 seconds, don't clap your hands. Just open your mouth and thank God for the miracle. Right now, open your mouth and thank God for a miracle. Right now, open your mouth, open your mouth and thank God for the miracle. Oh, 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 the miracle.
for your children. My father left me, but I understand my father's now saved and following my ministry because God made him birth his deliverer. Yes. He was saved by my ministry a couple of years ago, and I thank God for that. I praise God for these wonderful leaders of yours. I tell you, they've got a friend in me. I tell you, glory to your life. You are a wonderful life. Y'all clap your hands for me. You are so wonderful to me. I want to take you home, man. I showed you. I want to take you home. Where my man at? There you go. Man. Lift your hand. Y'all, y'all see him right there? Y'all gonna leave him alone. That's my boy. Yeah. Okay. Like he said like that, he cut the, I cut the right one. Yeah. That's my boy. Man. Clap your hands for my boy. That's my boy right there. And last, but certainly not least, I thank God for my wonderful family, my wife, and my children come and travel seven hours down the road to be here with me and a pass on today. Y'all clap your hands for my wife. Y'all raise your hands. Thank you, guys. You know, you guys I talk to you a few moments about the supernatural? Can I equip you today or are you tired? Amen. Oh, I can equip you? Get your Bible. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. God, like Apostle said, is ready to shift this church to another dimension. You won't operate like churches. Matter of fact, uh, Pastor, let me warn you, sir, it's going to be your time of reckoning and your time of crucifixion this year. This 2016 is going to be a great year of promotion for you, but it's going to also be a great year of coming against you. The church is going to come against you. Why? Because if the church, the legalistic leaders of the day would not come against you, then you would not be walking like Christ. But because you chose to walk like Christ, they got to crucify you because they crucified him. So you've got to go through the same crucifixion to understand they're going to come against you this season. But God said, it's okay, son, because you're carrying the cross I carry. And God said, those that suffer with me, they're going to reign with me. Let the Lord wash out in you, believe it. Shout glory. Let's clap your hands. Shout glory. Come back 
have you shall glory because you got to understand something. Anytime that you shall glory, the Bible in Revelation declares that there are angels in heaven that declare glory unto God on me. They just sit there, glory, glory, glory. They pour glory around all day long. But let me help you understand what glory is. Glory is not only a praise, glory is a call. Turn your neighbor. Say, glory is a call. Glory is a call. Yeah, I like, I like to talk, don't you? I like to talk. Okay, so I like folks talking to me. So I tell you, I tell people all the time when I go to churches, I say, look here, if I want to go to a dead church, I go to a cemetery. Right. <laughs> so I don't, I don't like going to church where everybody's sitting. Look at you. <laughs> I like to talk. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Hello. Just pissed at me. That's why I just pissed at me. Make sure I'm just like a cemetery. You know, we've got home in there. So, as I say, glory is a call. So anytime you release the word glory out of your mouth, you're not only giving God praise, but you're also calling for them angels that release glory. Yeah. And every time I say glory out of my mouth, glory is being released. I'm commanding glory to come down. I'm commanding glory to come in my life. And the thing about glory is that glory changes. So anytime I shout glory, I'm calling for change. I'm calling for a reckoning. I'm calling for a transformation. I'm calling for a renewal. So when I say glory, something is shifting in the atmosphere. So say glory up here. Yeah. about to operate in a realm of the supernatural that you've never seen before. Okay? Why? Because God, what he has done is he has done the church of this day like some frogs. <laughs> the thing you've got to understand about a frog is a frog has the ability that if you throw it into a hot pot, it's going to jump right out. Right. Yeah. Okay? It, it ain't staying in that hot pot because of its texture of skin. But if you put the frog in the pot while it's cold, and you just gradually turn the heat up, the frog will stay in it because its body will begin to adjust to the new temperature. Okay? This is what God has done with the church. He has slowly taken his anointing in each image. And they begin to adjust. They were operating on the level 10 of anointing. But then God took them down to a level 8. And what God did, he gave them time to adjust. Okay? And then he took them down to a level 5. And he gave them time to do what? Yes. And then he took them down to a level three, and then he gave them time to. Yes. Then they had a level one, and he gave them time to. Yes. And then they had nothing, and he gave them time to. Yes. So now they're sitting there thinking they got something, but they ain't got nothing because God has caused them to adjust. Yes. Okay? So what God is doing, now this is the season where now God is raising up giants in the realm of the spirit. Yes. Why? Because we've got to understand this is not no flesh walk, it's a faith walk. Yes. Okay? And the Bible declares that anything done in not a faith is sin. So anything you're doing that you ain't doing in faith, you're doing in sin. Yes. Okay? Why? Because you've rejected the very thing God told you to have. Yeah. Okay? So in order to understand that, we gotta understand who we are. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. I, am I am a spirit being. A spirit being. Genesis 1, verse number 26. The Bible declares. Jesus says, he said, let us make man in our image and in what? Our likeness. You got the Bible readers? What did it say? In our what? Likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and maybe every creeping thing and creeping upon the earth, even of the cattle, he said. He said, I'm going to give him dominion over all of that. Yes. Okay? But understand, God says right here, I made you in my image and in my likeness, and then I gave you dominion. Yep. Okay? Image, likeness, dominion. The problem with this is we don't truly understand it because we think God gave it to us. This is the problem. Okay? 
In order to understand the supernatural, you got to go over to the next verse. The next chapter, chapter 2, verse number 7. The Bible declares, what, what, what the Bible say? Read it. What does it say? And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Okay, wait a minute, though. But God already created them in chapter 1, in his image and his likeness. But then chapter 2 says, but now he don't went back and formed this man. Okay, so we got to understand this. Because then the Bible declares, says, God is a what? Spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit. And in truth. So in, under, in order to understand chapter 1, you really got to understand who God is. So in order to understand who God is, you got to go to that scripture, which is in John. John 4, 24, I believe that's what it is. And the Bible declares that he is a spirit. So in chapter 1, in Genesis, verse number 26, what God really made you as was a spirit. You understand that? Yeah. Say, God made me a spirit. God made me a spirit. And then he said, he made your spirit in his image and in his likeness, and then gave your spirit what? Dominion. Okay? <laughs> so, the problem with the church is, you keep trying to access dominion in your flesh. That's right. yeah. That's right. When he gave it to your what? Spirit. Okay? <laughs> so, as long as you operate in your flesh, you'll never operate in your dominion. Okay? Word. You'll walk around talking and casting, trying to cast out devils with no power. Yeah. Getting whooped out of your clothes. Yeah. Getting your light bill cut off. Uh, Getting your electric sucks. cut off. Come on. Why? Because you're still walking in your flesh. Okay? You're walking in uncrucified flesh. Okay? So what God is saying, He says the dominion is in your spirit. So in order to walk in your dominion, you've got to walk in the spirit. But didn't the Bible tell you to walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the lust of your what? Flesh. Your Bible says the same thing. So look here. He says this. As you go over, he's given the spirit dominion. He's given it power. He's given it authority over the earth. But then you get over to chapter 2 and he creates now a body for the spirit. Okay? He gives the spirit that holds all the capacity of this dominion and power a body. But then he gives the body a job. Okay? So go to chapter number two. Let's find out what the job of the body is. Chapter number two. Go down to verse number 15. Let's go to verse number 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to do what? Work and take care of it. To do what? Work and take care of it. To dress it, to keep it, to work it, to take care of it. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that the purpose of the body is to create an atmosphere so that my spirit can walk in its dominion? Yeah. Good job. Good one, good one, good one. It's my job of my flesh to be crucified. Because as I crucify my flesh, I'm awakening my spirit. So as long as I stay in the spirit and keep my flesh crucified, I stay in a level where I'm always walking in my dominion. And it's at that point I can tell the blind man, see. Why? Because my dominion is in his image, in his likeness, which means it's in his name, his nature, his authority, his character, and his spirit. So I don't have to go to the grave and say, Let me in the name of Jesus. I give the word and say, Hey, get up out that grave. Why? Because I'm not coming in the value of really. I'm coming in the value of Christ. You understand? Anytime that your flesh is crucified, you lose your identity. Yes, that's good. Okay? What that means is anytime you see yourself responding to a situation like you would respond, you in your flesh. Yes. <laughs> it's an indication that Christ is off and you are on. My Lord. Which means if you feel like that's on, it means you're going to get your type of response. Yes. Uh-huh. Your type of response bursts chaos, bursts confusion, bursts all kind of weird stuff. If you get in Christ, he said, look here, I need you to bless them that curse you. How you going to bless them that curse me? You know how she did me? Why are you saying that? Because you're in your flesh still. That's it. The only way I can bless you that curse me is because I love you more than you hate me. 
Right. You understand me? My love for you outweighs you cussing me out. Come on. Why? Because I have the ability, if I'm walking like Christ, to look beyond your fault and see your need. So I'm not looking at the fact you cussed me out. I'm looking at the fact you need to live with And why not be the front of the air? The trick devil did this though. Because he very conniving, he very cunning. You know that devil? He get on my nerves. He get on my nerves. I can't stand him. He hate me and I hate him too. Yes. <laughs> but 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 he decided that he wanted to infect the precious jewel that God had created. Yeah. He decided that you walking in all this dominion, it means that now God is being multiplied in the earth. Hallelujah. And because I don't want to see God multiplied in the earth, I've got to get something in there to stop you and prevent you from operating in the dominion that you know you got. Yes. Okay? So look here, go to uh, chapter number three of Genesis. All right. Let's find out what this old crazy devil did. Chapter number three. Let's start at verse number one. Just for the fun of it. The Bible says this. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have God said, Ye shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sold fig leaves together, and made them Aprons. What's the problem here? The problem is not that she bit the tree. Okay? The problem is what she was blinded to, now she can see. After they bit the fruit, the Bible says she gave it to her husband. After she gave it to him, Bible said both their eyes came open now. They see in a dimension that they had no access to. But now what their access was restricted to, they broke in. And now they've got illegal access into a realm that can kill them. Instead of staying in a realm where death couldn't touch them. Where death could not hold them down. Yeah, yeah. Where demons had no effect on them. Demons were not permitted to touch them. Because they were so pure. Yes. They were so holy. They were in the secret place. They dwelt with God. That's why the Bible said, He that does what? Dwelleth in the way. Secret place. Problem with the churches, they do busy visiting instead of dwelling. Oh, come on. Come on. Uh -huh. Okay? Let me tell you something, the difference between visiting and dwelling somewhere. <laughs> If you just continue to visit somewhere, it means the only uh, authority that you have is the authority of a visitor. Right. You understand? Yeah. So if you continue to visit the secret place, you only got the authority of a visitor there. You don't got the authority of the, somebody that has a key and lives there. Which means you can sit there and go, uh, have to try to go in the house, but you got to knock on the door. You can't just walk in. Why? Because you ain't got a key yet. You understand? So now you've got restricted access because you refuse to dwell where you supposed to be dwelling at. You just choose to visit there. You understand? So now you got restricted access. You can only come in certain times. 
You can only get prayers at certain times. My Lord. This is why some folk prayers ain't getting answered. Because you're still visiting. Mm -hmm. And that's all the authority you got. It's the authority of a visitor. See, come boldly before the throne of grace. That, that, that ain't for everybody. And see, what, what the church didn't teach us is that all the promises of God that you see in that good old Logos word, it ain't for everybody. Oh, healing is the children's bed. Who said you was a child? Well, because you read it in the book, right. it made you a child. No, this is where the misconception come up, and this is why we sit there and declare scripture after scripture for thirty years and still don't get the benefit of it because it's still the uh, dead letter to you that ain't became the living word. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. You understand? It's not until the word becomes alive to you by the unction of the Holy Ghost, bringing it alive and making it become illuminated to you, that now that word becomes your promise. Before that, it's just the promise of the building, that you ain't got access to. But so what's the problem? We keep saying all these promises that are for the children, but we ain't even accepted the fact that we are the child. We are the child. Okay? You ain't embraced it yet. You want to know how I know you ain't embraced it? Text. Who in here want to be a servant of God? Lift your hand. <laughs> My God. That's a whole lot of folk. Put your hands in. Now, the Bible says this. Romans. He says, you ain't no longer servants. That's what he said. He said, but now you're sons. Yes. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> we done feel the best. <laughs> Because we don't realize that we are sons of God and we have not accepted our promotion, it keeps us stuck operating as a servant instead of operating as a son. But the promises of God are for the sons of God. They ain't to the servants of God. As a servant, you still got to ask your master, can I have this? But as a son, you need to be able to say, it's my inheritance, it's my blessing, it's what's mine. But you know how to understand something. Let me tell you why so many of us is in trouble. It's because we still have a servant's mentality asking for son's blessings. <laughs> and if you know the thing about kingdoms is, back in the day, that was illegal. It would get you put to death for asking for the son's blessings, for the son's inheritance. You did not have the authority to come ask the king for his son's stuff. Who in the world did you think you are? And that's the problem. That's why so many of us are dying. Because we ain't realized who we are. And because we're still operating as who they told us we are. Instead of getting a revelation on who we are. And seeing our stuff in the word of God. Then what we're doing is we're asking for things that are illegal to us because of our position. You understand me? Okay. So the Bible says that their eyes were open, didn't it? And they what it said? So the Bible also declares this. He says, turn your Bibles, let's, let's go somewhere else. All right. Because there's a solution that has to come from this. There's a solution. Tell, tell your neighbor, God didn't leave me alone. Uh, they ought to say that like y'all believe it. Tell somebody else, God didn't leave me alone. God didn't leave me alone. <laughs> because you got to understand that as I come into who I am, it means that I still got a bunch of junk in me. Okay? I can't come into who I am without first dealing with the mess that's in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Which means you got to be willing to face you. Yes. Which oftentimes is the hardest thing for a whole lot of us to do. Right. See, because anybody else, you can call, oh, oh you a liar. Oh, no, no, you a cheater. Oh, you a stealer. But when it's coming in your face, oh, you a liar. Come on. <laughs> you, you, you a stealer. You do a cheater. Uh, that don't know how to stand the going. When the last time you prayed? Right. I, I just didn't enjoy a service thing. It wasn't anointed, really. What did you add to it? Come on, come on. Come on. I, didn't, I didn't feel the presence of God. I didn't feel the glory of God. Really, what you bring to the table? Hallelujah. Because there ought to be so much anointing in you that you can come in here and ain't got to grab no mic, but by the time you sit down, because you've been in God's presence so much, and everybody else in the church is all, because you've been in the glory, you can get into a frequency that releases that aroma in the atmosphere that all the way to be paid off. I 
I want to prove it because look here. Bible said also in Genesis while we're there, can I just take a side note? This will be free. <laughs> take a side note for me. Bible says in Genesis that uh, Adam, he sit there and he ate the food off of Eve. But then in generations down the line, we start talking about Adam calling him the big old bad sinner. But have you ever asked God, God, why did Adam eat the fruit? Yeah. You ever asked God that? Yeah. See, because if you don't ask questions, you don't get answers. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And, and to God, let me tell you how God looks at it. If you don't ask God questions, it means you're not interested. Right. Right. Come on. Right. So you can sit there and read the scriptures for six hours a day if you want to, but if you never ask no questions, God says, you still ain't in the rest. Come on. Right. Come on. You might as well go get you some Taco Bell. Keep yourself over the lazy bowl of the baby. Because God knows you ain't interested. Because you ain't even asked for questions yet. So I asked God questions. I said, God, I said, why did Adam eat the fruit? And he knew he said don't eat. God said, go back to verse 26. Let us make man in our what? And in our, in our image. God said, if I made him in my image and likeness, it means everything that's in me is in him. Yes. I said, okay, God. I said, you got to explain this to me. He said, son, he said, ain't I a redeemer? I said, yeah, God, you are. He said, so what makes you think redemption ain't in Adam? I said, wait a minute, God. Okay. You just went against everything the church that ever taught me, God. Yeah. I said, you might not really explain this to me. He said, I will. Yeah. I will. He said, look at this, son. He said, Eve ate the apple knowing that God said don't eat it. Right. The command was given to Adam, but Eve knew about it. Yes. So Eve was still going to be in trouble, guilty by association. So Adam had a choice. Wait a minute. Let me see here. I'm either going to let Eve give it by herself, oh, come on. or I'm going to decide to intercede with her. Because I know who God is, and because I walk in the spirit of discernment, I have the ability to see the heart of God. And I see that God wants to redeem Eve. So what I need to do is I need to step in a position and make a choice. What's my choice? I've got to decide at this point whether I want Eve to die by herself, or if I want to stand in the gap and redeem the one God gave me. <laughs> well, well. Why? Because in redeeming Eve, I redeem myself. Come on. Why? Because the Bible said, Adam said, that bone of my what? Bone. And flesh of my what? Flesh. And when the two become one, they become what? One. So for God to judge Eve, it was for God to judge Adam. So in order for Adam to walk in his proper position as a real man, he decided, I've got to redeem Eve. But there was a cost for this. Right. I wasn't going here, y'all, but there was a go, go, go to Romans, go to Romans 8. I wasn't going here, but I just shifted here. So shift with me. Go to Romans 8, uh, what is it? I believe it's about the 24th verse 8. What, what is it? 20, 20, 20, 20, what is it? 21. Eighteen. Eighteen. Read that out loud, Pastor. You got let me see. Yeah, no, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take I'll take that. I I'll take that. I can work with anything. I'll take that. I'm a fellow, y'all, y'all hear me? I'm a fellow. <laughs> so yeah, you can't call that still. I told you what was mine. <laughs> Let's see here. Go to Romans chapter 8. Uh, I have this one on verse number 19. Bible says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creep, listen at this. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. That means it went by his choice. It went by his own confession. Say, oh yeah, choose me. Mm -mm. He said, I wasn't willing to do this. This is creation that God created. He said, I wasn't willing. To. I don't want to do this. He ain't willing to do this. But wait, wait, wait. 
How do you know creation wasn't willing to do it? In order to understand how you know creation wasn't willing to do it, it means in order to know you're not willing to do it, you gotta tell me you ain't willing to do it. Come on. Because the only way I can know you ain't willing is if you talk to me. Amen. But wait a minute, how can creation talk? Oh. Well, the Bible, it lets us know that all creation, it got a voice. How can I prove it? Well, God told him Adam this. He said, look at Adam. It's your job to till and to keep the garden. But when did give him a rake? Come on. <laughs> Talk about it, sir. When did give him a shovel? Come on. Amen. When did give him some water holes? <laughs> oh, he did, not did you know what that means? It means Adam had to operate like God operated. Come on! Which was the Bible saying, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, which that formed the water, God was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Who that mean to Adam? It means Adam had to operate like God operated. Which means Adam had to speak to it. So when Adam did, he went to the tree. The tree? <laughs> and creation had to obey because it was obeying the voice of the creator. <laughs> See, because before Adam was contaminated with sin, he still had the voice. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. He had the voice of God operating through him. So what, what, what's the problem with the church is? Too many folks trying to get titles, they're trying to get license, they're trying to get called or ordained, but they ain't got the voice. <laughs> And see, I'm trying to tell you, God ain't your secret. He ain't raising up your personality. He ain't raising up your character. He ain't raising up your little opinion. I don't care how much you pay you. I don't care how well you may pay you. I don't care how much you make a sacrifice. God ain't raising you up. He's a living boy. Come on. 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 That Adam had to operate like that, so Adam had to speak to creation. So the only way that Adam knew that creation wasn't willing to do it is because Adam had a conversation with him. He had a conversation with him. Hey, y'all, I got to redeem me. I know, Adam, you ain't doing that. Can you just see it? Can you just see that? No, Adam, 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 not standing. That's crazy. That's what the squirrels say. But, but, but look here. Look here. Look here. The Bible says creation was not willing. Okay, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in heaven. Oh. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Yes, God. See, you got to ask another question then. Told you you got to ask questions. Yeah. God, and we ain't even got a verse later, have we? We said those same ones, all we got to do was love. Right. Next question was, God, what we got open? Yeah. What we got open? Well, let's find out. The Bible says, the very next thing, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. <laughs> so what in the world is this hoping? Well, because Adam learned how to operate in real discernment, which was to see how God wanted to do and see what was in the future, Adam was able to travel down generation after generation. And Adam seen Jesus coming, but he knew the purpose of Jesus. He said, okay, wait a minute, uh-uh, oh, that's just the seed, wait a minute, we got to keep going. And he kept on traveling, kept on traveling, kept on traveling in the spirit and said, oh, wait a minute, they go with me. <laughs> And no 
He got the heart of God. And he redeemed Eve. And that's the reason the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because there was a redeemer before Jesus. <laughs> and his name was Adam. But there was a redeemer after Jesus. And his name was you. Don't do that, Bishop. You can't go on worship. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 look here, look here, look here, look here. Here, here, Apostle. Here, take this, take this. Yeah, give me a few more minutes. Am I boring it? No. Oh, I keep going? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We, we, we almost done, though. I promise you. <laughs> so, look here, look here, look here, look here, look here. Because I told you, the thing that jacked them up is that their eyes were now open. And they were able to see things God never intended for them to see. Come on, come on. Yeah. Okay? So now they're beginning to operate and dabble with things that they weren't supposed to be dabbling in. Right. And this is why the Bible said their eyes were now open and they discovered that they were now naked. Yeah. Why? Because they were clothed before. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So how did you go from naked, from being clothed to being naked like that? And recognize it. Well, when your eyes open, it meant that sin opened, which means glory ain't dwelling in sin. See, before they were clothed with in glory. glory. Yes. So I could not see your nakedness because you were covered in glory. Hallelujah. Come on now. <laughs> this train is wide enough. I feel like preaching. <laughs> so look here. What am I telling you? In that. You so worried about your nakedness and God is trying to clothe you with glory. Oh. And if you just get glory on you, make it in the top of your nakedness. Oh, yeah. That's the important that we get to the spirit. But look here. In order for me to be clothed in glory, it means something has to happen because I didn't lose the glory just by losing it. I lost it because my eyes were open. Well, guess what? We missed the purpose of Jesus. We put to our eyes here to redeem, save, and set you free. But we missed one good important scripture. Go to John. Go to John. Because in order for Jesus to turn this thing back around, he got to go undo what has been done. Bible says, John chapter 9. Verse number 39. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be <laughs> What did he say? He said, I didn't come to just redeem you, I came to blind you again. <laughs> I feel like I feel that. Oh, 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 so what's the purpose of me being in the spirit? Because I gotta become God so that I can see. Yeah. So look here. He says this. Y'all sit down. Y'all make me want to preach. Some job almost done. Y'all gonna keep me. So so look so look. He said I gotta blind you again. It's one of my purposes in coming. But like I said, in the blinding effect, as God blinds you, you gotta realize. He's clearing stuff out of you at the same time. Because you have some generational curses that are in you. You got some bloodline curses, some bloodline iniquities that are up in you. Some stuff you're going through ain't even because of you. It's because your mama. Some stuff is because your old pappy. Some stuff is because your granddaddy. And it done passed down through generational line. It done passed down. And many people ask me, oh, oh probably, probably, they, they can't be born gay. They can't be born gay. And the Holy Ghost checked me one time. About two years ago, he said, oh, yeah, they can't. I said, oh, okay, wait a minute, God. Come on, come on. I said, wait a minute, God. Come on. I said, look, now you really gonna make these preachers mad with this. Come on. Now this man, this spirit really gonna try to kill me. Just up there, get off my back. <laughs> yeah. So, so he said, son, he said, have you ever noticed that when you go to the doctor and you say, I think my stomach been hurting, they're gonna ask you, well, did your mama have cancer? Mm. 
Right. Come on, did they your daddy have cancer? They asked for the Did your grandma have cancer? Why? Because they understood that some things are genetic and they travel down the bloodline. Which is why they're generation after generation. Well, let me tell you the difference between sin and iniquity. Sin means you mess up. Iniquity means you keep doing it over and over to where they now go into, which means they go into the bloodline. Which means they out of the hole and we're quit sleeping around. It's going into the bloodline. What's going into the bloodline? The people that are evil and they suffer it. We control your sex drive. So now I'm crazy. It's born with a demon. That they don't know how to act so. When I can see my legs cold. even before they find out it's wrong. So now, because you say, I got to raise my child as a child, you don't even deal with the demon that's in your child. Right. Come on. Yeah. Watch out. She Watch got, out. You, you, you ain't recognized that my child has potential. And see, many of us, we try to pour into our kids based on their intellect because we ain't operating in the spirit. But when you operate in the spirit, you understand that spirit food is spirit food. But we do not kids sit there and laugh and pray. And we don't get in the spirit. They are so young. So I know they are sitting there for an hour. And they are going to be the world. So I'm seeing their spirit. And not their intellect. God says, I gotta get all this mess out of you. Okay, right. you, you got some demons in you, got some, you got some stuff in past now. And God says, so I gotta cast the devil out of you. But this is where the church has made ministries. I'm, I'm, I'm a demon chaser. Mm. You a demon chaser? Okay, that lets me know you ain't functioning. Come on. Why? Because He said. He that dwelleth in the secret place, which means if I live there, demons don't have access to that place. Which means the only time demons can touch me is when I decide to step out of there. And the only time I step out of my house is when I'm ready to go exercise. When I'm ready for a workout, when I'm ready to fight, that's when I step out. But so many of us have made this our ministry. And if you may be in fact your ministry, it means you reject your real ministry. You ain't dwelling where you're supposed to be. You dwelling among demons and wondering why you fight them 24-7. That's where you make your house. But look here. The Bible says this. He says, look, let's, let's go over here too, and we're done with this scripture. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we are going we are going we going we have to finish up. You still doing all right out there? Yeah. You learning something? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. That's what I want. I want you to learn. So um, go to Matthew chapter 12. Because I told y'all he gotta get this stuff out of us. Yeah. Okay? He gotta get it out of us. Matthew chapter 12, let's go, let's start at verse number 43. Bible says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of the man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house, from which I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth, he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Wow. Why in the word of God saying that? That's a, that's, a, that's a statement. Even so shall it be to this wicked generation. Why? Because they're ignorant. And God said my people perish for a lack of what? Oh, they don't want to get it. 
In this scripture, we discover that when the unclean spirit is cast out of you, I, I, I can see a demon in you all day, baby. Daddy yeah, said you got a demon. I'll use you for example. You hear me? Y'all say go So I, I can say you got a demon in you all day. Say, ah, come in. Come in. Come in. Come on. I got to get this demon out of here. I clap the head. We got to work out this demon. Oh, 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 Is 
We are not talking about Hebrews 9 and 14 declares that it's the blood of Jesus that purges your conscience from every dead work. So what's the purpose of the blood? You gotta realize that demons they rest in your conscience. Demons don't control your actions, they control your conscience. Which means when they get in your pocket, they begin to say what's to your mind. Your mind talks to your feelings, your feelings talk to your emotions, your emotions are going to To leave the garnish and decorate. Yeah, church, yeah. church. Amen. So we decorate when God trying to purge. <laughs> because we refuse to apply the blood. But you know what? If we don't apply the blood, it means we operate in uncrucified flesh. You know what God told me about that? He said, "Son, He said, what makes the difference between you and, and, and another prophet?" I said, I don't know, God. He said, well, son, what makes the difference between you and a psychic? I said, okay, now, God, I know that one. I said, the psychic got the ability to see something, but they can't change it. I said, the prophet got the ability to see it, and they can speak to it and cause it to change. I said, now, God, now, God, I said, ah, 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 hold on, wait a minute. I said, what, God? This, this God checking me. I'm giving y'all a personal rebuke that I got. He said, no, no, no. He said, son, let me tell you something. You want to know why some of the words you spoke didn't nothing change? I said, oh, now see, it hurt when God talked to you like that, don't it? Here's your book of feelings. I said, God, I said, thank God, why? He said, because you operate like a psychic. Whoa, what's the word? Wait a minute. I, see, God jacked me up, girl. He jacked me up. They weren't, I'm so tough. He jacked me up. That's why. <laughs> I said, God, what's been on that boy like a cycle? He said, son, do you understand that when you ain't got the blood of Jesus applied over your conscience, it means you operate in uncrucified flesh. And as long as you operate in uncrucified flesh, you enter in from the same dimension that the demons enter into, that psychics enter into. He said, so that's the reason you ain't changed them because you enter in with uncrucified flesh, which means you're entering in illegally. <laughs> You're prophesying illegally, praying illegally, preaching illegally, speaking illegally. He said, you're just like a psychic. That's why you ain't got the ability to change nothing. Because you ain't crucified your flesh and purged your conscience. This is how important it is to apply the blood of Jesus over your conscience. Before you wake up, after you wake up, while you're about to pray, before you're about to sing a praise to God, after you're done singing a praise to God, apply the blood of your conscience to keep your conscience purged. ought to be a daily assessment. That's it. That's it. Why? Because if I don't apply the blood, I have no access. Right. Everything I do is illegal by default. Because I don't apply the blood. The blood is the thing that gives me the access to the realm of the spirit. It gives me the access to the holy place. It gives me the access to the presence of God. And this, by this reason, folks have gotten the presence of God mixed up because, you know, I heard somebody stop something here. So now I'm going to check it. Because they say, oh, well, well uh, but I still feel the presence of God. Now I don't apply the blood. No, the problem is you don't know the difference between the presence of God and the demon kissing on That's right. Oh, 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 oh. You're in the definition. That's See, right. because this is why the presence of God is not about a feeling and emotion of people going down my body. So I'm just, <laughs> no, uh, uh, uh. The presence of God operates off of faith. It operates off of belief. And, and, and I don't feel nothing. I know the presence of God is on me. And I don't feel a single word on my body. I know that it is here. And I don't feel a shame. I know the presence is on me. Baby, I can't get a word in the with my family. It allows an enemy to come in and say, okay, well, a demon peeing on you, urinating and defecating on you, it's the same feeling as that little tingle. Come on. So, so many of them have gotten used to that. That when the real presence of God come in, they said, oh, oh that ain't God. Why? Because they've adapted to a lie. Yeah. So now they've called the truth a lie. Right. And a lie, the truth. The truth. <laughs> because they have a lack of what? Knowledge. Oh, Y'all see how serious this lack of knowledge is? Amen. God said to me all over this country right now to break folk ignorance. That's what he's telling me. Yes. I'm here to break the ignorance of the saints. Because we're going to be who God declared we are. Oh, and not be the prophets that they try to lay us. Yes. Yes. So, 
So understand, God, God is, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about how we don't know the difference between the Holy Spirit from Jesus. <laughs> 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 I just kept my feet in the middle. She didn't want to do it. So, so, so understand that God wants us to understand His Spirit for real this season. Yes. He wants us to understand how to walk in the spirit. And the only way you can do that is by applying the blood because the blood gives you the access yeah. to the spirit. Yeah. You want me to prove it to you? I'm going to prove it to you. Go to this last scripture. You can be sitting, baby. You can be sitting. You got to go to worship. I feel like probably time to take a couple of folks. Let's turn, turn your Bibles to. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Go to verse number 19. Bible says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of what? Jesus. It's the blood that gives you access into the holy place. No blood means no access. No access. So if you press anyway, you go in illegally. And you're no better than demons. And you call God your father. But many, you really, the devil is your father at that point. Come on, come on. By default, because of your actions, the devil is your father. The Bible tells us who you yield your members to. To them are you servants to. <laughs> so let me tell you something. Your hallelujah, the, the, that, that don't please God. Your actions is what pleases God. Your obedience is what pleases God. So you can say hallelujah all day. But if you ain't obeying them, you ain't pleasing them. Bible went so far as to say, he said, do you think you love me? He said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. My commandments. Keep my commandments. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't want to keep my commandments? Why can't you get it? Because you don't really love me. And that's something hard for us to say. As God, I don't really love you. How many of us are really willing to come to that reality? Because we, we just think, oh, oh yes, God, I, 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 I so love you. I so love you. I so love you. And God's like, no, you don't. It was the hardest thing, y'all, when God brought me to that a few months ago. He said, son, I was, I was up there singing a song, y'all, real good pop this song. Uh, Lord, I love you more than anything. And he said, <laughs> I said, you know, I'm expecting to put God to fall on me. Lord, I love you. I mean, I'm going to worship for real, y'all. I'm going to more than anything. He even got good. I got, I got good. He started shaking my leg too good. You hear me? I was shaking my leg. It was good to me. And God responded to me. He said, no, you're not. 